Hello, and welcome to our exploration of energy body. So what you see here on the screen share is a person. And what we're focusing on for today is this orange circle at the pelvic area and this little purple circle up at the crown of the head. So for the very first breathing exercise, just that the very basic beginning thing that we're gonna be practicing throughout, hopefully most of the day, more and more becoming conscious and aware of this basic pattern so that we can build on into more advanced practices. So let's start off looking at this place up at the crown of the head. So when we get further along, we're going to be learning about the way the cycle of a year, the different seasons, and this gets into the four directions, um, the east being spring, the south direction being summer, the west direction being autumn, and then the north direction being winter. So all four of those directions have an element associated with them. Each of those elements are associated with parts of the body and also the chakras. So the chakras are elementally related with the seasons and with these different areas in our body. So the chakra system is essentially a map through the seasons carrying our breath through the different parts of the body. So one breath eventually ends up equaling one season. One breath cycle equals one day, one breath equals one week. So our bodies are keeping time through the breath. That's for everybody. For people who have a menstrual cycle, our bodies are keeping time through those moon cycles and also through the breath. So we're off with the very, very basic things and we'll see how much advanced we can get as we move through this course. So the very very first breathing exercise is going to be focusing here at the nasal bridge. And just so you know, there is a chakra here. This is um, called the Balabat chakra. You don't need to remember that right now, but just to start to get a visual of the map. So when you're locating yourself in this region of your body, to, to begin a breath, we're starting here. To begin a breath, we're starting at this section. So I'm pausing because actually the beginning of a breath is really the end of the previous breath. And this gets complex. I don't want it to be complicated, but you know how at new moon time, new moon means like we're going to have a solar eclipse in Scorpio, the sun and moon will be together. It's the ending of the Libra moon cycle. So it's the end of one cycle and it's the beginning of the next. So just like your morning starts in darkness, this is a quote from a song from midnight, your morning starts in darkness. So we, I want us to get used to that concept because it's going to come in handy as we get deeper into these Tantra yoga practices. So while I'm saying we're starting a round of breath here, we're actually, it doesn't really start here. Okay. So if you think about the moment you were born, the first thing that happens is an inhalation. So in that case, we can say without the esoteric ending being the beginning, we can say 
that we start with an inhalation because when you were born, the very first thing you did was take a breath in. So in one way, this is inhaling, bringing spirit at that first breath, bringing inspiration in spiritus, bringing the inspiration in. So just like that, when you inhale, bringing what we have here is this image of the crescent moon. And there, there is a reason that it is the crescent moon. And you can see that this moon that I placed here was the uh, balsamic. So it is the end of the previous moon cycle. Okay. Um, it's so hard to make this basic because I'm like, oh, I want to let's uh, it's we need to start basic, though. So. All right. So when you're inhaling this cool lunar inhalation, you're going to imagine this cool lunar inhalation going down through the body. And something I had mentioned before is to imagine like a little ladder so that as you're inhaling, you're imagining climbing downward. So you're bringing your consciousness downward on that inhalation. Now, when you get down to the end of your inhalation, there's going to be a slight pause. That slight pause is called kumbhaka. And during that pause, there's going to be things that we will do later in that pause. So I want you to really become aware of the pause at the bottom. Now, when you're ready to exhale, you're going to imagine the heat from the sun or the fire that's in the lower portion of the body. You're going to imagine that heat rising. So as that heat rises up, it makes its way back up to this section of the body where you will feel the heat. Actually, on the exhale, if you really focus and pay attention to the subtlety, you will feel heat leaving through, through the nostrils. Okay, so that inhale and exhale is the beginning process. That is gonna be the basis for every single thing we do. So for one week straight, when you go to bed, when you wake up in the morning, and whenever you think about it during your day, just take a moment to remember this visual of that crescent moon at the, at the crown of the head. This crescent moon is actually representing Shiva. If you've ever seen Shiva, Shiva has a crescent moon, which is also a balsamic moon. One way to remember the difference between the waxing, the, you know, when we're coming to fullness is that when you look up and you see the moon, the waxing gibbous, meaning that it's growing in size, will be filling your hand over here to the right. So this will be the first light that comes when it's a waxing crescent. Then when we get to that balsamic phase, the moon is in your left hand and the crescent moon fills in that direction. So visually, it's important for when you're working with the moon or other things, which we might get into in this course, I'm not sure. But just so you know, just so you have it in your memory and have the, the mental association with this ending balsamic moon phase relating with Shiva, which has to do with a masculine connection to awareness to the masculine force of that, what I call the field, the field of awareness, or sometimes 
sometimes I might say the sky of awareness. So you're looking up at this vast sky or this vast field. And that is the force of, in this context, the masculine force holding awareness. And then when we get down here to the pelvis, now what I also wanna mention here with this sun, I have the sun down here in the pelvis, but for some of the practices, we're going to be focusing the sun in the heart. So this is movable. This can be movable. The heat can be movable. We're gonna start down here in the pelvis though. So the sun represents Shakti. Shakti is like the female energy. And in this context, this energy is the active force, the dance. So when you think about Kundalini Shakti, it's like this feminine, I always think of belly dance. And also in, in India, what you will see a lot in India is this very beautiful art of temple dance. And this is related to Kundalini Shakti, which is that feminine. So we need to have that field of awareness in order to have a space for this dance to take place in. So that sun down here relates to that feminine, active, desirous make some other um, mental associations here. So with this cool lunar inhalation, and we're going back to Shiva and the coolness, when you inhale, it's likened to a cool night in India when the sun goes down and it's a refreshing, cool inhalation. It's also related to semen. So it is a flow. A white flow of breath is the masculine flow, which is related to semen. This becomes important and we start looking, if we do, I'm not sure if we will or not, but the nadis, the, the ida, the pingala, so that's the left and the right channels, and these relate to the heat and the coolness, which relate to masculine and feminine. And this is part of the whole chakra map. So it does get really complex and it took me a very long time to learn this. And so what I want to teach is the basics. And one of the really beautiful things about Tantra yoga is that it is meant for householders. Householders are people like you and me who are not living in an ashram, or I was living in an ashram at one point, but now we have all the uh, other things that we're doing, like running our home and having a life and having sex, having emotional issues come up and things that we need to work with, with money and secrets and all the Scorpio topics of just intense emotions of being in a world with other people. So that white relates with the masculinity, relates with semen and relates with awareness. Okay. So then we go to the solar energy of Shakti. And this is going to be relating with heat our menstrual fluid, so blood, that heat of our blood, and that creative force of movement. Now, what happens when the white flow of semen meets the hot flow, the red flow of menstrual blood? Okay, back in the, the times of these uh, tantric texts, they thought that that would create life. And now what we know is that actually, that means that ovulation isn't taking place. 
So there won't be life created, but there's actual rituals where we would merge these two fluids together, like in the physical, we would merge the two fluids together. And there's many things that we would do with those two fluids. Okay, so that might be too much information for what we're doing here. But just to give you a broader context and to tell you that we are going somewhere with the inhalation and exhalation, it's a very deep and profound practice. So when I say cool lunar inhalation, now you have a broader awareness of what's happening. This, this balsamic moon at the top of the head, and I, it, I'm going to be pulling it this way, although our breath actually only comes in through the nose. The image, when you go, it's about 12 inches above your head. You'll see here, it's called the Dwada Shanta. The space above the head, a very magical space in which many things occur. Just to put it in the awareness, put it in the field of your awareness of what's happening there. So when you see me go like this, it's because it's like grabbing that Dwada Shanta is a space beyond time. It's beyond the, the Balavat Chakra, this bridge of the nose. So we're bringing that energy in with the breath, down through the heart, down through the belly, down into the pelvis. Okay, so now once we've got through that part of the inhalation going down through the bridge of the nose and we've got this created ladder that is helping us to visually climb downward. So keeping it simple, we're not using any visualizations of the chakra system or anything like that just to start off, but know that it is there and that at each of those centers in the there are elements associated, like I mentioned in the beginning, which relate with the four directions, which relate with the seasons. And um, there's a different sound vibration that goes with those elements, depending on how deep you want to go with this. But for the basic, we're going to imagine with the inhale, what I call riding the inhalation down into the pelvis. So riding that cool lunar inhalation down into the pelvis, climbing down, climbing down. The diaphragm, which is right inside of the rib cage, your diaphragm is going to push downward. So when you inhale, you want to make sure that you're not doing this. You don't want these accessory muscles and there are some breathing practices that I will share with you that are optional that you can try them on their actual real yogic breathing practices that will help anything else you do better but just for now the basic um, keeping it simple is that when you inhale you want your collarbones to stay put you want your shoulders to stay put so the shoulders aren't raising up you should feel most of the expansion happening right where your rib cage is. So with those rib expanding outward, the fram pushes down. And eventually, as we are expanding the breath more and more, this will open more and more. Most people, and I have touched so many people through body work, most people are breathing up here. Most people are completely breathing in their neck muscles, in their collarbones, and a lot right through these, uh, oh, I'm sore, <laughs> um, these upper ribs, ribs one, two, and three. Most people are breathing there, which is, has a lot to do with pe uh, the tension and the headaches and all of this. So 
but be gentle with yourself. And that's the reason I'm saying most people breathe up here is because there's a very good chance you are too. And so when we get to the next step, which I'm going to be teaching you now, you might find it challenging until you get through this part. So some things that you can do is have somebody massage you. Um, some, and I actually, I did a video not too long ago showing some techniques that you could do to like release tension in the breathing muscles through manual manipulation. One of the best things is really just to breathe, <laughs> just to breathe deep. One thing I love about running is that it forces me to bring my breath below my rib cage. So I have to engage my diaphragm and I have to engage my pelvis because, you know, in order to hold breath, you have to expand. Um, so another thing you can do, what I actually, this is not optional. This is something that I really want you to do is to take your fingers and you would want to be able to get one, two, at least two of your knuckles deep underneath your rib cage. And you might notice that at first you're, see, there's like this, for me, I've been doing this for so long that there's this instant that it happens because if I, whew, if I want to get under, I'm going to stop so I can focus and talk to you. If to get underneath my rib cage, I have to surrender. That means that the, the metal armor around my body that I have to, I mean, have to hold just to live in a city. There is a layer of armor that we're all wearing. Unfortunately, I dream of the day where I'm in a food forest that I've created and I'm totally unarmored and I'm like in this constant state of relaxation. <sighs> but as you could see, I am not there yet. So you're going to take your fingers, put them underneath your rib cage, every inhale. That's when you don't push. So when you inhale, you just get into position. When you exhale, your body softens and then you're going to, I don't want to say dig in, but it's like, that's when you're going to assert, assert your will. So you're penetrating your rib cage with your fingers and your body, your rib cage is going to surrender. And it might not at first because we're not used to, especially if you're in a male body, it's going to take some time. And that's perfectly fine. Okay, so now the reason that we're doing this is because this area where our rib cage is and where our diaphragm is, is going to be a, as you can see, looking at this diaphragm, it's the middle point between the inhalation and the exhalation. So this, this whole section of where our rib cage is, is like, it's like a, like a tunnel. I was going to say a bridge, but it's more like a tunnel because we're passing through here in the vertical. A tunnel would, I mean, a bridge would be more connecting something horizontal in my mind. A tunnel would be connecting something in the vertical. Is that right? Vertical, horizontal, yes. Okay, so, okay, so we've done this releasing some of the tension in the diaphragm so that your inhalation can actually reach down to the pelvis. Why this is important is because your inhalation 
becomes the exhalation at the point of the breath pause. The breath pause, the first breath pause we're going to have happens in the pelvis. It's technically happening in the diaphragm, but we want to be able to make contact with the pelvis with our visualization. So inhale, bringing that cool lunar inhalation down. Diaphragm pushes down toward the pelvis. And then when you're at your fullest, you've breathed your max a short pause. And then the exhale, the energy rides the breath back up this ladder, back up to the nose. And this, this section of the nose, is, you know about your pineal gland. I'm sure if you're listening to this, you know about your pineal gland. And we're making contact with that part of our body. And the more that we're doing just this portion, the deeper we'll be able to go with the next portion. Okay, so let's move on from this. You know, you're going to be practicing this, this part a lot. Okay, so now that you've got the basic flow of in and out, you're going to notice where your sticky spots are. That's actually notes here. No, you can't see it. Notice where the sticky spots are. So what does that mean? Sticky spots. So as you inhale, you might, I'm, I pointed out the diaphragm. You may notice that it's something in your throat, that there's, um, so in Tantra yoga, we have uh, granthis. They're, they're called knots. There's three main ones. And you may notice at certain, you may notice in your nose, I don't notice in my nose because I do a neti pot morning that's salt water in my nose on both sides. And the reason I do that is because it helps with intuition. Keeping this clear helps to filter more than just particles in the air. It helps to filter bullshit <laughs> so that when you're going through the world, you're able to really have a clear connection to your pineal gland. You may notice it's blocked here and that's an easy fix. You practice neti pot. And if you don't know how to do it, I have a video. What do you know? It's one of my first videos on YouTube teaching how to do, um, there was a uh, six ancient cleansing techniques that all, all six of those help with your energy. So basically what energy is, is when the senses in the body become refined, there's your physical senses, and then there's the subtle senses. And that's what we're talking about here. So the first one is cleaning the nose. Every morning, first thing I wake up, I go straight to the kitchen. I clean my mouth. I clean my nose. I dry brush. So brushing my skin, which helps the lymphatic system. And then I sweat, either steam or take a run. So cleaning the pores. So that cleaning process, physically, manually cleaning the body helps to keep the energy clean. All right. So that was the next thing. Notice where there are sticky spots. So the reason you're going to notice this, you can manually work. So say uh, we talked about the nose, say that you feel a sticky spot in your throat. You can manually with massage oil, you can work. It might seem like it doesn't matter or like you're like, oh, this is stupid. It's really not actually like I get paid $150 an hour to do this on people because it's not stupid. It's actually super beneficial and you can do it on yourself just as well as you can pay somebody $150 an hour. So what you're going to do is whatever area of the body that you find a sticky spot, you're going to manually move the fluid, move the tissue and notice like if it's a, a tightness, Maybe you're going to start just doing a circular motion. Maybe you're going to spread the tightness. Maybe actually pick it up. Uh, like 
you know, I'm trying to remember what this is called. It's not to poke. Can do to potent though. This is to potent where you would actually just basically drum on it, tap on it. Oh, it feels so good. <sighs> okay. So find a sticky spot. Now the 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 next thing I was gonna say the first thing we're doing. The next thing we're gonna be doing is a practice from Tantra Yoga called dissolving mental constructs. So what happens pretty much all throughout the day, whether you're paying attention to it or not, we have a belief about something, we have a thought about something, we have a thought about something, and then we make it into a real thing. Why is this important? Because it stops the flow of breath, stops the flow of energy. And what we're doing in this course is learning to manage, manipulate, control the flows of our breath, control, manipulate, manage the flows of our energy in our body. So let's see, mm, dissolving mental constructs. So the first thing for dissolving mental constructs is, let me go ahead and take this screen share off. All right, so there is three things that we're going to first discover before we get into dissolving mental constructs. The first thing we have creation, stasis, dissolution. Creation, if you were in any of my astrology courses, this was going to be the card, the card are directly related to creation. Creation is the, in your mind, when, let me, let me give it to you like this. Imagine that you are going to eat cake. I don't know if you like cake. I personally don't really eat cake, but um, so the creation portion of eating the cake would be, there's the cake. That's the initiation. Here's the cake. That is also what the cardinal signs astrology. They are what gets the thing started. So Aries, it's the beginning of spring. It's where we're youthful and motivated and we want to get going and like go do stuff. There's the cake. Creation. Stasis. Stasis is a self-exploration. Like Taurus. Taurus is exploring the self. It's self-interested. It's holding the moment of pleasure. So in relation to this cake, stasis will, mm, and you get really absorbed in the self, in the senses, in the exploration of what that taste what that taste is. So that's stasis. Mm. And then we have the dissolution of this cake experience. The dissolution would be like Gemini and, and these creations, stasis, dissolution, it goes through all the signs, cardinal sign, the holding sign, and then the, oh, the mutable. What is that holding one? cardinal fixed and then mutable so in this case fixed would be taurus would be tasting the cake dissolution is going to be where we like the taste fades hmm, the moment fades and then now we're ready to do something else So in, in, and there's two more things, but it gets too esoteric. The two more things uh, we have creation, stasis, dissolution, forgetting. So after the dissolution, the, the moment faded away, you might completely forget about the ecstasy of that self-interest of that deliciousness of that moment. You might completely forget about it and then just start scarfing the food down. This is something that 
Um, there's a book called Intuitive Eating I read years ago when I was working with um, an eating disorder. And then again, when I started helping people with nutrition counseling, this is a recommended book because it's, it's very normal in our culture to not even pay attention to the moments of eating the food. So like I'm mentioning that first taste and you have this experience and then it dissolves and you forget that you're in a moment of ecstasy, which is in your food. In India, eating the food we eat with, or not we, I'm not there anymore, but we would eat with our hands and it's like a ritual, like making a sacrifice to the fire in the, which is considered the goddess. Like I mentioned that Kundalini in the lower portion of the body, that's called the lower Kundalini. There's an upper Kundalini also. So we're putting food into the fire and then that, but when the forgetting happens and it's like no judgment or anything, cause we all do the forgetting phase, there is a moment of grace that we can remember. It makes me cry when I've forgotten whatever that is. I'm not paying attention to my breath or I'm eating cake and forgot or in the middle of a beautiful ecstatic moment with my lover and I I forget that I'm in that moment I yeah I start thinking or doing going somewhere else in my mind and then there's a moment of bringing it back that is the grace uh, and that's the fifth act so there's these five acts of creation so dissolving mental constructs to know that there are these five acts of creation and all throughout the day, you're in one of them. What you're going to do as part of these practices is notice which of the five acts of creation that you are in, in any given moment, become aware of it. And next thing, you're going to practice contracting and expanding. Okay, so now that you've noticed that I'm in, okay, so there's this thing happened, I'm talking to this person at work and they did something. It, that creates a mental construct, that creates a moment of stopping the flow of your breath. A lot of times something happens and we, we hold, we squeeze, we don't even notice it, but we'll tense up. The body is holding it because at work, you can't say whatever, you know, you can't it's hard to discharge energy in our modern culture. Like if you were an animal out in the field and something happened, you would fight, flight, freeze, flee, whatever all these different things are, you would do something, you know, you would be able to like, I guess, yeah. If you were in the wild, you would just do an action. You wouldn't just stand there, <laughs> you know? And in the movement, we're able to disperse energy, but in our modern world, I mean, not me so much because I'm not that appropriate anymore, <laughs> but in our modern world, we'll often hold our energy in. So the next thing we're going to learn is contracting and expanding our energy. contraction of energy. So what we're going to do for this is you're going to imagine that as you're bringing your inhalation down into your breath, that you're able to pull all of your awareness in. So this is something that I'll mention, like when I start a reading, when I'm doing a reading with somebody, drawing all of your awareness in toward the center. So this is a contracting. So in um, shamanic practices, this would be where we're getting small. We're contracting our energy to one small point at some part of the body. So for to begin with, it's really uh, be easier to pull the energy in toward for me, like right in here in my sternum or right into my diaphragm. Yeah, this is where I normally pull it in. But for you, you got to find 
balance. So you'll find where in your body you're contracting your energy. So it gets really small on the inhalation because that inhalation comes down, but now we're like drawing it all the way in like a turtle pulling itself into a shell. Then the next thing we're going to do, you guessed it, is expanding your energy. So now this inflow in, the exhalation comes up. And what we're going to do is heightening the senses. So with your eyes, like wherever you're at right now, you're going to notice what's in the visual field. It's sort of like, like if you're, if you could see everything all at once, there's a lot of these um, little practices that we do to heighten sensitivity because modern most people are completely turned off to their senses. And that is a protection mechanism because it's loud with the news and the sounds like my neighbors have, I can hear them playing music, these ones talking um, at night when I'm sleeping, I'll hear like little critters in the yard. That's fine. I actually really am comforted by hearing the critters outside, but it's like most people don't even pay attention. So some of those things that you'll do where you'll like open your eyes big and like notice what's in the periphery. Okay. So I see, uh, my poster about the moon. I see that thing over there. And I see this imagery of the curtain. I see a little bit of uh, piles of books and this is all just, you know what I'm saying? So you're looking, it's like opening your eyes and seeing everything, like really drawing all your awareness to the visual field. Then you do the same thing with, how is the direction of this? So we always start with sight, then it's the sound. What do you hear? So you want to hear first what's right here. You, you can hear my voice. What's just one level beyond that? I hear a cricket. I hear cars. I hear a jet. So you're going like that, like going out and just expanding your sense of sound. Okay, so we got sight, sound, then touch. Oof, this one. So my, like, we forget, like, I don't know what happens in our brain, but like the, the feeling of our clothes becomes like not noticeable. Like we don't notice it. So for this, for touch, first thing, like I feel my hair on my shoulders. I feel soft. This is on my skin. I feel my waistband. I can't stand things around my waist. Ugh. So I feel that. I feel these beads on my neck. So you want to what like notice how your skin feels. And if you do that right away, like feel you don't feel your clothes on you or feel your socks. You don't, you might not, because that is that's extra. That's like sensitive. You might just take your hands and like touch yourself. Ooh. So ooh, that gives me tingles on my, ah, so I'm sensitive. So my senses are refined, but that's partially because of doing body work for a many, many years that my sense of touch is highly, highly refined. So don't worry. It might not start like that, but just start to expand that. Okay, next is smell. This one is kind of tough, I feel like, because there's so many smells. It, it's like they all kind of blend into one smell. You know what I mean? But for me anyway, but just notice, like what are the different things that you smell? Okay. Okay, taste. It's kind of hard unless you're like eating or drinking, like actively eating or drinking, I'm looking around, like, do I have anything to eat or drink in here? Of course not. I probably got water right here. So this might be better done, done with something to taste. I don't know, like tasting your own mouth. 
All right, so there's the five senses. Now, for this expansion exercise, you're going to, mm, one with the connecting, we are going to bring awareness, what um, I think it's Carlos Castaneda books, they call it a second attention. The second attention is like, that small awareness that you will keep while you're doing something else. So in this case, contracting, pulling in toward the center, it's like getting very small and um, contracted, you know? So sense organs have drawn really far in. You're, you're not noticing what all is happening. You're really bringing it down to a point in the body. So whatever point you pick, because eventually we're going to be bringing that point of awareness to specific places in the body. Actually, oh, I didn't, I didn't write this, the, the last part down. I feel like when you get the last part, it like makes all these other things that could possibly be boring, more exciting. So the last part of these exercises that we're doing is to, um, we're going to hold the breath at, at the top, at the inhalation. Inhalation, we hold down. And then exhalation, we hold at the end of the exhalation. Now, the thing that is fun and exciting is that we bring our awareness on the inhalation, bringing it down to what is called the tip. The tip is either going to be the tip of whatever's at the end of your regenerative organs. So it's either going to be the tip of your penis or that's going to be your clitoris. So now it's getting exciting. Now, when you contract your energy, so at the, the end of the inhalation, there's a contraction just with your energy, just holding an awareness at the tip. Now, when you exhale, you draw that energy all the way back up to this portion of your head. Okay, so that just to get some excitement going because we are going somewhere with this. Now, when you expand all of your senses all at once, it, it's like, you become really big. You're expanding your awareness through all of your senses to, to receive as much information as you can. And it's sort of like that fire, that passion, your desire, your, you know, when, we, when, when you felt yourself, when you touched and you're like, ooh, it like brings a lot of energy. So now it goes it goes all everywhere at once. All your sensation goes everywhere at once. So that's the expansion of awareness. Hmm. Okay. I think I'm going to stop this part and we'll come back and do some more um, practices and a little bit more theory. So thank you so much. Please feel free to ask any questions and I look forward to seeing you again soon.